Hey guys, Mr. Jansen here again, here to take you through um, 41 through 50 on the 100 illustrated ways to pass the Earth Science Regents. Um, so let's get started. Uh, number 41, the hottest part of the day is after 1 p.m. Okay, good. That's kind of due to the temperature lag. Okay, once again, the sun's most intense insulation is solar noon, but due to a temperature lag, um, it's actually not going to be hottest until around 1 o'clock. Kind of like a bank account. In other words, if you put, let's say, $20 into your bank account and then you take out 10 you still have a surplus of money, just like you have a surplus of energy um, around 1 o'clock. So that's why the, the, the Earth doesn't get warmest until uh, 1 o'clock. Okay? If we want to see this as a practice question um, on the Regents, uh, it may appear something like this. On June 21st, the hottest time of day would be closest to what time? Once again, um, it's not going to be solar noon. It's going to be around 1 o'clock or choice C. Very good. Okay. Uh, moving right along to number 42. As temperature increases, the air pressure decreases. Okay. So as it gets hotter, that means the molecules spread out more. And if the molecules spread out more, then you're not going to have as much pressure. Okay. Because the molecules aren't as confined. So as the temperature goes up, your pressure actually is going to drop. Okay, so looking at this graph, as temperature increases, once again, your pressure is going to decrease. All right, so we call that um, an indirect relationship. Um, if you see it as a region's question, the graph below shows the air temperature for an area near Earth's surface during a 12 hour period. Which graph best illustrates a probable change in air pressure during the same period? Okay, so once again, you have kind of an increase and then a drop off. And once again, you're going to look for the inverse of that. Okay. Um, and the inverse of that, all right, is going to be choice D, okay, because it's kind of going down and then back up again, all right. So once again, as temperature goes up, your pressure is going to go down. Okay, number 44, air pressure decreases with altitude. So um, this is your layers of the atmosphere chart from the Earth Science Reference Tables. Just analyzing this real quick, we have the altitude increasing over here. And this kind of funky zigzag line is showing what's happening to the temperature. So in the troposphere, where we live, the lowest layer, the higher you go, the colder it kind of gets. Kind of like going to the top of a mountain, it's a lot colder than maybe near sea level. Then in the stratosphere, temperature is actually going to increase. Then when you get into the mesosphere, it's going to decrease again. And then the thermosphere, it's going to increase. Um, but we're talking about pressure here. And pressure, the further away you get from the surface of the Earth, the less pressure there's going to be because you're getting furthest from the center of Earth, and that's where the, the gravity is the strongest. So once again, the higher you go, the less gravity you have. So the less air there's going to be. The air literally is thinner the higher you go. Okay, The molecules are further apart. Um, just showing you the same kind of deal here with regards to you know your altitude and kind of what's going on with your pressure okay so here's millibars and pressure 700 600 500 400, 250 200 and here is your altitude okay um cool so um if we were going to see this as a region's question it may appear something like this a balloon carrying weather instruments is released um, at earth's surface and rises through the troposphere as the balloon rises what will the instruments ge generally indicate Okay, um, well, as you're going up, it's going to get colder, like we talked about, and you're going to have less pressure because you're further from the surface of Earth. So we're going to go with D, okay, decrease in both air temperature and pressure. Great. Number 45, cooler and drier air generally exerts higher pressure. Warm, moist air generally exerts lower pressure, okay? Um, I think of, you know, high pressure being happy weather, low pressure being lousy weather. High pressure... You're going to have the molecules kind of closer together, okay? Low pressure, the molecules going to be a little bit further apart. So once again, um, if, it's, if they're closer together, you're going to have higher pressure. And if they're farther apart, then the air is going to have a tendency to rise and it's going to be lower pressure, okay? As a region's question, it says a high pressure center is usually characterized by what, okay? It's going to be generally cooler and drier, or if you, I mean, if you want, think of just happier weather, okay? Or choice C. Right. Uh, 46, wind is the result of pressure differences. That's what causes wind, okay? Going from an area of high to an area of low. Um, you're going from an area that has a lot of air molecules together to an area where the molecules are kind of spread out. And if you have a big difference between that, you'll have a stronger wind. If there's a slight difference between the high and low pressure, it'll just be kind of like a slight breeze. So wind is caused by pressure differences, okay? On the regions, 
It says, which atmospheric conditions would cause smoke from a campfire on a beach to blow toward the ocean? Okay. So you're going to need high pressure over the land and low pressure over the water. Okay. So once again, it's going to go from high to low. It actually kind of reminds me of a land breeze. Okay. Uh, maybe that's why the campfire, maybe it's at night. Uh, kind of an indication there, but we're going to go with choice four. High pressure over the land and low pressure over the water. Okay. Um, again, 47, wind blows from high to low pressure. That's kind of what we said before. Here's a nice little pressure gradient here. That's, that's a pretty decent size gradient. So you're going to have a, a decent wind going from high to low. Okay. It's always going to start around the high, go outward and clockwise into the low um, counterclockwise. Okay. Uh, so 47, what we're talking about here with regards to Green's question, um, surface winds on Earth are primarily caused by differences in what? Okay, so winds, okay, are going to be due to differences, right, um, in air density or air pressure, however you want to put it. Okay, they're saying air density here due to unequal heating of the Earth's surface. Unequal heating of the Earth's surface, it, we're talking about water has a high specific heat, so it takes a long time to heat up. Land a little lower, so it's going to heat up a little quickly. That unequal heating is going to cause your surface winds. Speaking of winds, wind is named for the direction that it is coming from. So if the wind's coming from the west, as indicated here, we call that a westerly. It's coming from the east and easterly. Uh, nor'easter comes from the northeast. Okay. So once again, where, wherever the wind is coming from, that is what we're naming it for. Okay. Um, so here's a region's question. It says the wind at station A is what? Okay. So the wind at station A, here's station A, okay, right over there. So it's kind of basically pointing towards the northwest there, okay? And that's where the wind is coming from. So, once again, we're going to call this a northwesterly or choice C, okay? Very good. Okay, number 49. Uh, the closer the air temperature is to the dew point, the greater the chance of precipitation. The dew point is the point at which dew occurs, okay? That's the point at which condensation is occurring. So, the closer the temperature is to that, um, the more likely you're going to have precipitation, okay? So uh, an inter interesting graph here, it says the air temperature and dew point difference. Um, as that, you know, I mean, increases, your chance of precipitation is going to decrease. This is showing an inverse relationship. Uh, maybe a little confusing, but what, once again, what we want you to understand is when that dew point and temperature get closer together, you have a great chance of precipitation. Sometimes in the question, they'll show you a station model with the temperature and the dew point, and they want to know which station model has the greatest chance of precipitation. So you're going to put the, pick the one with the ones um, close together. You'll see maybe another question. Weather station measurements indicate that the dew point temperature and air temperature are getting further apart and that the pressure is rising. Okay, Which type of weather is most likely arriving? Okay, Rising pressure, that's high, pre uh, high pressure. That's happy weather. Okay, so now we're talking about, once again, that cool, dry air, or choice three. Uh, number 50, weather moves from west to east in the United States. So yes, the jet stream moves all the weather from west to east. West to east. I mean, these arrows are kind of indicating a straight across. Sometimes there's a slight dip in the um, west to east movement. Maybe it become, becomes more of a, from kind of a northwest to kind of a, you know what I mean, kind of a northeast kind of movement. So just, you know, keep that in mind. Um, how it might appear in the regions is in what general direction do low pressure centers usually travel across New York State? Okay, once again, across New York State, you're going from the west to the east or choice A. Okay, thank you for watching. That's 41 through 50. Stay tuned for our next video, 51 through 60. Have a nice day.